what time is it? It's time to leave school and... But wait, first you must watch the third of the High School Musical Trilogy. Uh, and draw it. Uh, because this is, you know, this is high school, um, yeah, musical three, senior, yeah, see what they did there, because it's like the last year of American high school was the senior year, so that's why they called it senior year. Cool, let's just jump into this video, it might be a bit of a long one. Or, I could evaluate the effectiveness of the musical in the third film, Senior Year, and how it reflects the emotions and themes that the film itself discusses, as its almost meta approach is presented in an externalized monologue by the whole cast, which in turn represents the coils and tribulations of leaving high school. That's what I initially wrote in my script for the first video on my analysis of High School Musical 1, where I did this whole big kind of thing talking about how I could completely try to dissect these films but I think that that's like the most important thing to note about this film with High School Musical 3 is that it is an attempt to have this kind of meta narrative about itself which I think is a nice idea I think it's a good touch I think it's interesting that it, that later in the film when they get to their prom section you think that it's you know they're all they're doing their song and dance about them all getting dressed up and the boys have all this anxiety and don't want to go through with it and all the girls are so excited this is going to be the best day of their lives and then they have their fake prom and then it does it turns out that the actual prom doesn't happen for another you know I think another few weeks it doesn't happen until like two three days before the actual show premieres which I think is the only kind of strange irony about the whole entire film, especially because the film really, you know, tells you and emphasizes how the play is meant to be a capture of their time at East High. So how can they be talking about and singing and dancing about their prom when there is no actual when they haven't actually done the prom yet? And maybe it's just because it's simply they're just showing, oh, hey, we went to prom, we all got dressed up and went for housing and whatever, even though in the reality of the film, Troy and Gabriella don't even show up to their prom because Gabriella's in a completely different state or town or how she's a long way away, so Troy drives to her, and then it takes them the next day and a bit to get back to actually finish the play, to actually be there to do the musical. So I think that maybe they just t chose to do that as a dramatic thing, but I find that quite interesting that, you know, they there's this whole thing about, oh, we got to, you know, depict every single important moment of our entire year in one whole play, which in my own experience, we did a video uh, that is on DVD that I have a DVD copy of, of our, of my final high school experience of my year 12, but it doesn't capture that much that they that actually it really happened in that year at least especially not for me uh so it's interesting that like how many specifics do you want to get into for the whole entire year so obviously with something like prom we can just like kind of wing it because everyone knows what prom's like and maybe that's what the film's commentary is on we've seen a hell of a lot of prom films before that's like what all of these high school movies pretty much entail with yeah we're gonna end it with some big dance or a prom or whatever so screw that we'll have our prom number which is just us doing a rehearsal of the prom number that will never come up again, not even in the actual show, because we've already shown it to the audience. Why do we need to show it again? And so when they actually get to their actual prom, they don't even show that in the actual movie because the only prom thing you have is with Gabriella and Troy. So that's just a note I want to start off with before I actually kick into the actual script because I never wrote anything out about that. And it's just been on my mind this whole entire time as to how really kind of absurd that whole entire thing is. So let's get started. Uh, okay, High School Musical 3, A Redemption. Yes, much of a redeeming factor in my 40 plus notes. Holy shit, this was released theatrically. So, the, I mean, like, that kind of explains the whole widescreen, you know, 
185.1 ratio, so that's that's nice. It's different to the 4x3 that I was complaining about the previous two films, even though, to be fair, those were made-for-TV movies. This opening shot just made all of the teenage girls faint, so they're going to have to buy tickets to see the movie all over again. That's That's good marketing right there. It's a good strategy. There are 16 minutes left to be a wildcat. They're losing. And Zac Efron isn't the one with the inspirational speech. It makes sense that this that the coach, of course, aka dad, aka dad coach, does the speech, but let's be honest, we gotta get dramatic as it's the final film. The first song is contextually about how this game can change their futures, as this will be their last game, so they will at least try their best, not just to win, but to have fun. As they say, this is their last chance. Suddenly, Troy falls after a foul, but his girlfriend character is there to sing at him from the stands. This is companionship at its finest. We aren't even five minutes into the film, and the replacement characters for Troy and Chad have been released into the wilds of this film during the basketball game. So much for first impressions. However, he shoots and scores the final ball and wins the game, so yay sport. I guess that's what we're meant to get onto the good side. Oh, hey, look, the replacement for Troy is... It's Troy, except his dad isn't the coach, but he's good at basketball, so I guess it doesn't matter. My spirit animal is now a DJ. Oh lord. Single shot checklist includes couples that are still together. Everyone is having fun. Characters with musical love are doing musical stuff. You know, my spirit animal. And Chad and Troy have possible basketball futures as Red Hawks. Also, yeah, replacement for Troy is trying too hard. Subtextually in this scene here, we can see Gabriella is wearing white to indicate her virginity before high school ends. So, yeah, Troy's not having that much fun. They sing about how they could have anything if only they put their insert excuse for conflict here. Sharpe is apparently worth drooling over. Sharpe's replacement is a British assistant. What could go wrong? Spirit Animal suggests that they do their final show together as a way to remember their final year. But of course it's up to Troy the Brave to convince them. Mm. It was at this moment that I predicted that the conflict for Troy would be whether he would do a basketball scholarship post-graduation or attend the fancy art school. I wonder how this will go down. Let's talk about Sharpay's aspirations. She wants to be famous. No change there. I do like their musical number though, in terms of practical sets. It definitely suits Sharpay and Ryan's characters that they get the elaborate musical numbers. I can appreciate that. Also, it really goes to show they really, really went out with their budget on this one. They're like, nah, we're doing everything. Sharpay's evil plan is to get Ryan, arguably my favourite character, to screw with my spirit animal. This is concerning. Sun shower during Troy and Gabriella's dance because nothing is more romantic than pneumonia. The characters decide to screw with their male replacements by stealing their clothes. I'm glad the movie has already decided that it doesn't like these characters. Let's hope they never show up again. Chad now has a story arc that is set up in the second act? where he has to ask Taylor out to the prom, but not in a cheap or cheesy way. Uh, oh, uh, it must, it must, you know, it must result in some over-the-top, overly romantic kind of thing, but of course he has to figure this out for himself, because he has to really, truly realise how much he loved, nope, okay, it's done in five seconds. It's only a five-second arc, wow, how dramatic. It's just, it's just done. He just yells at everyone to shut up, and then he asks her out in front of everyone. That's it. There you go, kids. Took five seconds. Wow. The real question during the let's get suits and dresses for prom song is who is taking out my spirit animal? What I didn't realize during this song was of course that it was meant to be part of the student play that represents this time in their lives and yes it's actually nicely done and kind of meta and and is at this point of the film simply a rehearsal as I mentioned earlier. Of course, for my hope, this is the only prom thing that they actually do in the film because, you know, prom is overplayed and boring as hell. 
Unless, of course, there's pig blood poured all over Gabriella, but uh, otherwise I don't care. And, I mean, obviously, as we already know, luckily they just don't do the prom thing. They just do something different. But not the pig blood, so that's disappointing. Also, yeah, we do find out that my spirit animal is going with Ryan. She isn't really going to get a romantic arc or anything in this film, is she? Oh, God, that's disappointing. I wonder how many people were so disappointed that Chad didn't ask out Ryan or that Ryan didn't ask out Chad. I'm sure someone was disappointed. I'm sure a lot of people are disappointed. Notably, all the songs so far have been fine, you know. Contextually, they are appropriate, and they're appropriate to the characters and to the situations. However, none have stood out as much as the songs from the first film have, nor are they nearly as memorable, which is also a flaw in the second film. However, you know, Sharpay's fabulous song and the baseball dancing song are memorable enough. You know, you know what's going to happen, and you kind of remember maybe enough of the lyrics. This film does have nice production design, which I think is all that it really has going for it, outside of its theme of leaving and graduating and childhood being over and all this other ending stuff. You know, finales and stuff. I don't like so-called Rocket or Rocket Man. Not just in this film, but uh, also not in real life. What's up with Ryan's bag when he drives in on a Vespa? Also, why do they have to show that scene of him just driving in on a Vespa? It doesn't do anything. And then, of course, Ryan officially asks Kelsey to the prom. After the musical number about the prom, because apparently it's two days before the show. So again, yeah. Weird that they're making their musical number before they're actually going to the prom, because the prom is actually before, like, two days before the musical number, which makes a lot of sense. There's not, lot, not as much pressure. They can have a lot more creative freedom with who goes with who, who dances with who, however and whatever. But they really emphasize the who's that girl element when, you know, the, the, the first one of the big couples comes through, and it's just, it's Kelsey and Ryan all dressed up, you know. He's got a suit and a bowler hat and a king i believe and she's in a dress and she looks fantastic and he looks fantastic actually they all look fantastic fuck the costume design is great in this movie is great i hate that anyway and so wouldn't it have been then or before that that he had have asked her because this just implies that they were already going to the prom so yeah that's a weird thing like this whole scene could have taken place before that and it wouldn't have you know, taking anything away from the film, it wouldn't have made it more confusing. And the whole point for Ryan to go to the prom with her is to get closer to her to steal the music. But of course, I mean, as of the end all be all, he doesn't do that anyway. But like, they could have had that earlier in the film before the prom thing. So then them going together in the prom actually makes more sense in the musical as it would in real life. And so it also continues that narrative of, you know, Sharpay using Ryan to mess with uh, Troy and Gabriella through the use of Kelsey, much like I'm pretty sure the second film also did. Wet paint joke is amusing. They have a scene at Chad's house to expand on how he has a family and Troy is there drinking milk because I guess he wants to be extra white. Gabriella now proceeds to leave the movie and get a real job because sweet high school romance is a waste of time and I don't understand how people didn't understand this, you know, is what the movie was trying to say all along. Maybe because she comes back later, but no, 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 no that's not important right now. We've got to focus on what's happening now. Troy is angry that his dad coach won't let him go to musical school instead of basketball school because this is the first film all over again. Yawn. Inception set of Troy singing, but it happens to be a pre-Inception trick. It's as if the craft of filmmaking has existed for over a hundred years. I, you know, I bet someone just said Macbeth and now everything is going wrong in this film. In reality, we just call this the second act. Fuck, they did the prom thing. I mean, still, not completely the prom thing, but it's prom thing enough. You know, it's, it's you know, it's prom enough. Kelsey introduces us to the final act, a.k.a. the musical. It's about bloody time. It only took them, you know, what, two movies and an hour and a bit more to finally have a musical actually happen in these movies? Christ. Now we get to watch them re-sing the songs from earlier in the film. So, yes, now we get to watch what we just sat through an hour of all over again. 
Discount Troy comes into the musical like it's a 90s prank show. And I actually kind of found that amusing. It's the only redeeming scene of his character. Outside of the fact that a slightly bit earlier he just completely froze because he found out he had to actually, as an understudy, perform in front of all these people. So I guess his way of, you know, getting confidence was, again, through 90s prank shows. Discount Sharpe is a backstabbing bitch and can burn in hell. Troy and Gabriella show up for their song and everyone cares? Everyone cares? Jeez. I mean, except for me, of course. But like, wow, everyone is just cheering and just... I guess the whole audience of this auditorium is meant to be the audience in real life. It's just like, if they're cheering, we gotta be cheering. Not to mention how their song is about how they'll always be together. And I think this is an extension of how everyone in the year level and class are trying to think of. But, you know, too bad that, you know, give a few moments after graduation, half of them won't even remember who the hell the other half are. Sharpe and Fake Sharpe have a kind of sing-off in a way. They just just sing different lines from the same song that they've both rehearsed. And its overall message is simply that the new cannot replace the old. Great. My spirit animal gets the scholarship. I'm happy that she kind of has an arc of sorts that just more or less congratulates the fact that she has musical talent and that some people can actually appreciate that. It's very nice. Also, Brian gets the scholarship too. I think that's meant to be a kind of way for them, the movie, they'd be saying, they got to get together in the future because they both go to the same place and doing the music. So, um, I just, just wait until she finds out in, high, in uni that, of course, he has ulterior motives. Troy is then forced to choose in front of the whole school as to what he will choose in his future. And, of course, he chooses both. He chooses both basketball and he chooses both music at the same at a, a school that he actually obviously off-screen put research into and was able to jokingly be able to say, hey, it's like 32 miles b- away from Gabriella, so that's all right. We'll be able to hang out still because I can drive. Yeah. That's actually kind of nice. <laughs> it's a decent way to wrap up. Like, it's a kind of still cliche thing, but like, it's a nice kind of happy ending thing where he doesn't just decide, I'm going to go musical all out because that's what I really have a passion for. It's like, no, he actually likes both enough that he doesn't need to choose one or the other. He can choose both. Also, his dad has this closing arc in a way, simply just accepting that his son can do whatever he wants because, ha, <laughs> suck shit. This kid's like nearly 18 probably 18, I don't know, who cares. Cut to the final actual graduation, where they reinforce how everyone can be who they want to be. They also, of course, reprise the We Are All In This Together song in the background, which is nice and probably made someone cry in the audience, in the theatre, if it wasn't everyone except for the parents who were bored as hell. But that's alright, it's fine, you know. But we aren't done yet. There's one last song to sing in their graduation uniforms about their future and another final one shot. Great. Like one long shot, one long take. I actually do kind of like that. They've done that throughout every film, I think, so far. So, I mean, they did it twice in this film, probably to make up for the fact that they probably didn't do it in the previous film. So, you know, that's fine. That's fun. So, yes, goodbye. This is it. Don't come back, movie. Uh, that, what, no, what, no, it's it's there's there's still more. There's still one final note about the song. Oh, I have one final note about the song. It's not even the movie that I'm going to talk about. It's the high school. No, it is the movie I'm going to talk about. It's the high school musical song. You know, which just goes to show how you know people were concerned that the show was too meta. The movie is even more meta, kind of when you think about it. Is it more meta because it doesn't actually reference the fact that it is meta? Probably. I don't know. As a final note, I should mention that I actually did quite like and enjoy this film. It still has its cliche moments, but everyone has at least something to do to some degree. And I like the musical numbers in terms of how they are portrayed. Not exactly the songs, I don't care much, but they're not at least still at least not annoying, you know, they're not terrible songs. Even the self-reflection songs, which are a real drag. They're not overly, you know, depressing or... uh, They're not High School Musical 2, let's put it that way. And this is a nice closing film. It obviously tries its best to set up a fourth film, but I I still wonder why they never did that, but it doesn't really matter. They did the High School Musical, the musical, the series, so that's kind of its own can of worms. Plus, there's the Sharpe and her Fabulous Adventure movie. I think it's just called Sharpe's Fabulous Adventure. Nevertheless, 
and some movie that's probably on Disney Plus that I might watch and might do a talk on screen review of because let's be honest, I don't think I could actually um, download it at all or get a version. I don't really want to spend money on that. So, yeah. Cool. Let's cut ourselves to the outro and that's where I'll say goodbye in the outro. <laughs> Cool. That was weird. That was a really long jump. I kind of hurt my legs. Um, and that was High School Musical 3. I'm done now. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get that Sharpe film unless I can, again, get a, like a really shitty bootleg copy. But again, I don't know if, if anyone's going to give a rats, to be completely fair. Um, and it might not be even this style of a video. It could just be me watching the video, the film on like Disney Plus or something, and then just like, oh hey, uh, I'll just use the clips from the trailer, or whatever, or whatever I can find on YouTube and break it down like that. But outside of that, that's a thing that I might do just as a fun little thing. Like this whole entire thing has been. It's been fun. It's been interesting. It's it's. I'm I'm happy that I've been able to reutilize my actual experience of watching this trilogy to begin with. It did almost entail me having to rewatch the films completely, but at the same time, you know, you give you give and take some, you know. If you're really, you're really watching a movie, if you're typing, you know, notes about the movie and then rewatching scenes over again and whatever to make sure you got everything. It's not really watching, you know. So yeah. This has been my f- final high school musical video, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, feel free to like, share, and subscribe for more. If you have not seen the first two parts, they will probably be linked here and here, or something like that. Maybe one of them will be, I don't know, the first one's like half an hour, because I talk about my relationship with the trilogy, and how, you know, it was during my primary school years and whatever, and the second one talks about just the second film, because it's 16 minutes, it's just, get straight into it. So, yeah. Um, cool. Alright. Bye. See you next time.